This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. A certain elderly man there was who was having his 100th birthday party. And a reporter for the local newspaper was in attendance to cover the story, get an interview. He, of course, asked the standard question, to what do you attribute your long life? The old centenarian paused to think for a moment, then listed off his habits of living. He said, I don't drink, smoke, or overeat. I get up at dawn each morning, and I say my prayers every night. The reporter said, well, I had an uncle who lived according to those very same rules. He only lived to be 60, the old man said. He didn't keep it up long enough. There is something intensely significant to be said for the power of endurance. The secret of a truly vital faith is endurance, keeping at it no matter what may happen. See yourself in this new light, that you are a valuable, infinitely valuable son or daughter of God. And if you can believe that's true right now, today, then believe it tonight as well and tomorrow as well, and forever. Because the truth is not true just because you happen to be thinking about it at the moment. The law of gravity doesn't cease its function just because it slips from some physics professor's mind for a second. And even if you don't emotionally happen to feel loved by God all the time, it remains the truth that God loves you. God infinitely cares, and His Spirit indwells your mind. I had a friend with an old car years ago, he said that car could go anywhere as long as it was downhill. Such is many a person's religion. It's tolerable for coasting, but it doesn't have the power for climbing. The teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, however, possess strength and endurance. God will not run down like an eight-day clock, nor shall God's spirit burn out like a melted candle. God's eternal love for humankind has no expiration date. And you can count on it, and you can keep counting on it even after you run out of numbers. The love of God for you personally, not vaguely abstractly in some distant, removed sense, but involved in you and your life. And a setback is but a stimulus to a true son or daughter of God. And that is who you are. But sometimes it's not until a person's fallen to the ground that he discovers the sky, not until he or she has known despair that he or she will turn to God. A certain man there was who set out to climb a mountain on a fine sun-glinting morning, determined that he would scale it clear to the top. But as he climbed, the sky became overcast, and soon the fog lay in a gray velvet cloak about this mountain. The climb became increasingly difficult, and the man began to lose heart. And then at last, Pausing, exhausted upon a ledge, he cursed aloud, and flinging the pack off his aching shoulders, decided that he would be unable to reach the summit after all, and kindling a small fire on the ledge, warmed himself against the icy mists. Then, wearily and with a heavy feeling of defeat, returned back down the mountain. But the very next day, another party of climbers scaled that same mountain and chanced to come across the first man's fire. There it was on that little ledge, just nine feet away from the very peak, the top of that mountain. Multiplied millions of men and women have fallen into despair and have given up an aspiration, never realizing how near they may have come to it. Just that little bit more, that unflinching determination to keep at it a little bit longer, that may be all that is needed for success and achievement. You may say, oh, I'll never amount to anything. God can't possibly have any really great use for my life. So in despair, you may stop climbing. But do you know, you may even now be but a hand's grasp from greatness in the kingdom of God. Rally your faith and your hope and realize that you're a child of the eternal and God's spirit will strengthen your endurance if you will claim it in faith. But be not misled. The life of faith is not just a heavy endurance contest. Serving your father God is not an experience merely to be grimly tolerated. Any more than growing from childhood to adulthood was all pain and no joy. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus had this unique ability to turn an idea inside out like a reversible vest and show that there's another way of seeing it. As an example, most people would tend to think of happiness as 
the state of being served, being waited on, and misery as being the one who's doing the serving or helping other people. But Jesus unbuttoned that idea and turned it inside out and reversed it and came proclaiming that the true secret to the highest spiritual joy is not in being served, but in serving others, caring for others, loving the love of God and the love of humankind. I don't mean you're going to have a falling down giddy fit the next time you open the door for somebody. Jesus' religion is not a momentary whim. It's a lifelong way of life. Keep at it with perseverance. There are times when a person feels he's come to the end of his rope, but rather than giving up and tying a noose, or even just tying a knot and hanging on, I say start climbing again. Aspire ever toward the highest. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, said Jesus, and all other things will be added to you. A good father's love is not merely a genial, fond, and abstract kindliness. A good father's love is extraordinary. It is vitally concerned with the child. God loves you, as I say, not merely with a distant goodwill, but infinitely and overwhelmingly, a transformative love God has for you. Now, you may say, with a sense of despair, but I'm just too set in my ways. I can't change. Yes, and probably a caterpillar gets set in its ways, too, as a caterpillar. But it can change. Ask a butterfly. God gives you the power of becoming, and such a power that is. Many a young man or woman would like to be a doctor, but many of them do not want to go through the process of becoming one. The years of study and sacrifice, the long hours and the training. But God gives the power to become, the power to grow. It is dynamic, from the same Greek root as dynamite. Power for your life, to live as you've always really wanted to live, a transformed life. If your religion doesn't change you, you'd better change your religion, because authentic faith always makes a difference in the way you are, the way you act and react, and the way you feel. There burns within each one of us the unquenchable flame of divine questing. We were made for something better than mere mortality. For although our mortal minds are caught and snared in the silken nets of time, yet in our souls there surge the yearnings of eternity. And these deepest cravings shall find their consummation, for the kingdom of God is within you. God's love for you is infinite, which means not finite, not limited in any way, shape, or form. You may recall from mathematics studies the infinity symbol is sort of a figure eight lying on its side. For a moment, think of the biggest number which you can conceive. You can't do it. You can't do it because no matter how big a number you think of, you can always add one to it or multiply it times itself to an even higher power. Four trillion, eight billion, one million, and two is less than four trillion, eight billion, one million, and three. There's no limit to God either, to God's love, God's care. God's concern and desire of good for you. It is infinite, and by that infinite love of God, your life can be filled with love for all of humankind, for every other person you encounter. It's difficult to describe these things. Religious language is largely poetical or comparative. It's akin to the language of love. If I say my wife has a peaches and cream complexion, hazelnut eyes, lips like cherries and apple cheeks. It may sound as if I've described a fruit salad. However, the more discerning will comprehend that I was talking about love and talking about a person only poetically. So when Jesus describes God as Father, realize he wasn't saying God is an elderly deity emeritus wearing a robe sitting in the sky, but that God's personal affection for his children is like that of a parent for a child. Have you ever talked with a really good man or woman? Say a good man whose son or daughter's been having problems, difficulties in school, a brush with the law, health troubles, whatever. And have you seen in that parent's eyes the immense compassion for that child, the love, the desire to help, 
the desire to better the lot of that boy or girl. You parents know what I'm talking about. If you really love your children, it shows. And that is how God loves you only infinitely more. That is God's love for humankind multiplied times infinity. Therefore, prayer and worship are natural outgrowths of this, natural interactions with God. Prayer is talking with God, sharing your inner life with God. Prayer seeks for something for the self from God. Worship seeks nothing for the self but God, the experience of God himself. Prayer seeks closeness with the will of God. Worship seeks closeness with God. Prayer asks, worship thanks. Worship rejoices in the love of God, exults in the presence of God, sings praise to the nature of God, shouts gladness for the goodness of God, gives thanks for the glory of God, devotion for the mercy of God, and honor for the fatherhood of God, and for our mortal sonship and daughterhood with him. It is the joy of joys to find and know God and to serve God, to turn to God with all your heart and say, here am I, send me. Here am I, use me. I am willing to go anywhere and do anything and be anything the living God desires that I should go and do and be. If you dare in this moment to pray that prayer, your life will never again be the same, for you will have begun to live as you were born to live, for God. Write to us, will you, at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. For free literature on the spiritual life, write to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's Box 3080, Oakhurst, California. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell this mailing address. Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the world wide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.